Hi. Before we start, I'd like to apologize for the delay. I got carried away playing War Thunder, but hopefully that will change. In today's video, we're going to take a look at something a bit different. The best budget-friendly computer. We'll be checking out a PC build available on the Alza store, which will be linked in the description. And here we go. The computer will be priced around 27,000 CZK, which is approximately 1,050 euros, making it a very decent PC that will even handle War Thunder on high settings. Thanks to the end of the Silicon Crisis and the arrival of new series of graphics cards, computers have significantly dropped in price. Let's move on to the first component of our PC, which will be the processor, or rather the AMD Ryzen 5 7600, will be the brain of our computer. It's one of the cheapest processors of the fifth generation, but even at its low price of 200 euros, it offers high performance at precisely 3.8 GHz with a boost up to 5.1 GHz on a single core. The processor has six cores, which might not seem like much, but it will be more than enough for gaming. Of course, for video editing, I would consider a better machine, perhaps an i5 from the 12th generation, which in my opinion, offers better processors for work. Another advantage is its support for DDR5. The cooling will be handled by the Arctic Freezer 34. While the processor comes with its own stock cooler, every gamer knows that stock coolers aren't always the best. Yes, they suffice for basic internet browsing, but if we fire up a demanding game, we'll start pushing into high temperatures, which we want to avoid. High temperatures can lead to processor throttling, and we definitely don't want that. That's why I believe this cooler will be more than adequate, thanks to its dual 120 Minimis fans. This cooler can handle processors with a TDP of up to 210 W, whereas our processor only has a 65 W TDP. We'll be using Kingston Fury 2x16 GB RAM modules. The RAM frequency is 6000 mean ORFs. Naturally, we could consider higher tier RAM modules, but at 118 euros, these are truly exceptional options. As mentioned, these are DDR5 RAM modules. Furthermore, given their excellent price, they are an ideal choice for our setup. Arguably, the most crucial component for this computer is the graphics card. Thanks to the arrival of new cards, it's quite straightforward to assemble a powerful and reliable computer with high performance. That's why I've selected the RTX 4060 which, at a price of €347, Euros, offers decent performance. Of course, if you have the budget, you could invest in a better graphics card, such as the 4060 Ti 16 GB, which is about €105 Euros more expensive, or the 4070, which is €240 Euros pricier. However, for playing War Thunder, the 4060 will suffice. The graphics card has only 8 GB of VRAM, which may seem limited by today's standards, but it's adequate for playing War Thunder. Additionally, it boasts clock speeds of up to 2500 MHz and memory speeds of 17000 MHz. Another reason why I've chosen this graphics card is its power consumption. The RTX 4060 has a power consumption of around 115 TD which is excellent considering its performance. The cost per frame is approximately 3.8 euros at 1440p and even less at 1080p. With 3700 CUDA cores, it has about 2000 fewer cores than the 4070. But as I mentioned earlier, the 4070 is twice as expensive and has twice the power consumption. Therefore, I believe the 4060 is a suitable choice for our PC at this price point. You might wonder why I didn't consider AMD. 
That's because while AMD cards are cheaper, they consume slightly more power. For example, the RX 7600 has the same price range, slightly higher clock speeds by 100 magmanosbrits, but it has 33% fewer QDA cores than the aforementioned 4060, while consuming 31% more power. Moreover, NVIDIA offers better features, such as its own AI bot, similar to ChatGPT, or software for noise suppression during video recording. Next up, we have something for storing data, the SSD. For storage, I've chosen the Kingston KC3000 with a capacity of 1 TBAS. Of course, in today's world, we're sticking to M2 SSDs because of the incredible speed they offer. This particular SSD boasts speeds of 7000 MBS for reading and 6000 MBS for writing. At a price point of 80 euros, you get a decent storage solution with a durability of 800 TBW. It's a good SSD that we'll use. However, if one terabyte isn't sufficient for your needs, you can always purchase additional ones because our motherboard can accommodate up to two M2 SSDs, and that's what we'll be focusing on next. As I mentioned, now we'll focus on the motherboard because we need something to connect all our components together. That's why I've chosen the Gigabyte Ball 650M D3HP motherboard because it supports the latest DDR5 RAM or other newer RAM modules. Here are the specifications of this motherboard. We'll be powering it with a fully modular 750 watt power supply. The MSI Mag A750GL PCIe 580 Plus Gold. I intentionally chose a higher wattage power supply for this computer because in the future you'll likely be upgrading this PC and I want to ensure that you won't have to replace the power supply as well. That's why I opted for a 750 watt unit instead of say a 600 watt one. The price of such a power supply is around 102 euros which is quite reasonable for a power supply that will last you several years. Now, returning to the motherboard, I forgot to mention its price earlier. It's around 118 euros. So, this concludes all the details regarding the motherboard. Let's get back to discussing the power supply. The power supply is equipped with a single 120 mm fan for cooling, which is standard for power supplies of this size. We'll be housing all of these components in the GameMax Defender Mesh Black computer case. The case is a MIDI tower, but it still accommodates our graphics card without any issues. In its default configuration, the case comes with four fans. Three 120mm fans at the front and one 120mm fan at the back. However, if that's not sufficient for your needs, you can add either two 140mm or three 120mm fans at the top, two 120mm fans at the bottom, and two 120mm fans on the side. However, you won't be able to control these additional fans via the motherboard. In my opinion, the default four fans should be more than enough. The price of the case is around 60 euros. Overall, I think it's a well-designed case. What do you think? And this is all for this video. I hope it helped you at least a bit with choosing a PC. Of course, you still need thermal paste, but I assume you know that. Let me know what you think about this PC, what to change, and if you'd be interested in more videos like this, please like and subscribe. Goodbye for now.